Scotland. Almost 80,000 square kilometers of enchanting land. With dramatic wilderness and an amazing array of spectacular wildlife. From the iconic and the extremely rare to the hunters and the hunted. Filmed over four dramatic seasons, creatures here will need strength and tenacity to survive a wild and unpredictable year. Springtime in Scotland brings longer days, warmer weather, and high libidos. This is the breeding season, and many animals are about to face the biggest challenge of all. Finding a mate and raising a family. April mornings on the moor are still chilly. But that won't discourage these male black grouse. They arrived here just before dawn, hoping to woo a hen or two. But despite the glossy plumage, gorgeous red-eyed combs, and burbling ballads. Not a single hen has graced them with a visit. With no one to show off to other than each other, the boys start to square up. This is a knockout competition where cocks goad each other <laughs> to see how far their opponent will go. Cocks that hold their ground will stand a better chance of mating when the hens do arrive. With so much to play for, things quickly escalate and feathers fly. But before any victors are crowned, the weather calls time on proceedings. Nobody knows who's won or lost. So the lads will have no choice. They'll have to come back tomorrow. and fight all over again. Where the moors meet the mountains in Glen Shee, some animals wait until evening 
before engaging in lustful pursuits. This female mountain hare has to make some tough decisions. There are a lot of potential mates out here. But which males are fit and healthy enough to father her young? There's only one way to find out. She catches the eye of a likely contender and sets off to test his virility. Their shenanigans draw attention from other males. And soon, she's surrounded. Her fur takes a battering. But it's all for a good reason. She may have found Mr. Wright. After a brief union, She sends him packing. Like all female mountain hares, she's a free spirit and will raise her leverets on her own. Almost 500 kilometers north of Glenshee, Spring is also working its magic on the islands of Shetland. Every new day brings an extra five minutes of daylight. Most female otters here are already pregnant and won't give birth until summer. So with no cubs to care for right now, they can kick back, relax, and indulge in a bit of me time. But one mum isn't so lucky. She has a fully grown up son who's refusing to leave home. He's a canny cub who knows how to hoodwink his mum into letting him suckle. They've got a strong bond, but it's crunch time. She's about to move on. But will the young cub be able to survive alone? Back in the highlands of mainland Scotland, one animal must also complete the final part of the journey to adulthood on their own. Emperor moth caterpillars wrapped themselves in silk last summer and have stayed in these cocoons ever since. until today. It hasn't seen the daylight for nine months. But now it's emerging. After a miraculous metamorphosis, Once free, they pump up their wings. A 
And then his beauty is mind-boggling. But the magic doesn't end there. A nearby female releases a pheromone from a gland at the tip of her abdomen. It's a moth love potion, which the smaller, more colorful male can't resist. He picks up her scent on his feathery antenna and sets off to track her down. Male moths can detect females over one and a half kilometers away. So there must be other males on her trail. But he's got her all to himself. And soon, the two furry moths are cuddling up. She'll lay up to a hundred eggs after dark. And when they hatch, another remarkable story of transformation will begin. More than 300 kilometers south of the Highlands, spring also works its magic on Scottish farmland. And in Stirlingshire, that means lambs, thousands of them. And each one, potential food for a hungry predator. an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Red kites circle over the vulnerable newborn. On the lookout for an easy meal. The ewes seem nervous, but they needn't fear. Because these kites aren't here to kill them. But to clean up after them. Sheep after birth is attracting them. It's a springtime delicacy that red kites have been waiting for. They swoop down on their one and a half meter wings and grab what they can. Most ewes eat their afterbirth to throw predators off their track. But a few remain strewn over the fields. The hungry kites are keen to make the most of them. Other scavengers want in on the act. But with their speed, and agility, the kites can easily dominate smaller birds. When a heron saunters in, it's a different matter. He's a finely tuned hunter, with a reputation that precedes him. 
Best to keep well clear of his dagger-like bill. This one-meter gut bucket can swallow a whole placenta in one go. These kites will have to be quick. If they are to mop up the last titbits. When there's nothing left, the kites head back to their nests. More lambs will be born, and they'll be back to give this field another spring clean. Back in the cold waters of the North Atlantic, the otters feast on the sea's riches. But the young male still won't leave his mum's side. Perhaps he's grown too used to home comforts. To encourage his independence, Mum leads him to a rock pool for a hunting lesson. The animals here can't get away, so catching them should be simple. But the cub doesn't seem interested in survival school. Playing hide and seek is much more fun. Mum shows him how the rock pulling is done. Crabs are plentiful and can keep a young otter like him alive until his fishing skills improve. But why pay attention to her when there are birds to chase? While he larks about, his mother secures another meal. This time, it's a big, juicy octopus. Now she has his attention. Maybe he's not such a slow learner after all. Sponging off mum saves a lot of effort. But it's not going to set him up for the future. On a late April morning, in a secret patch of forest in the Cairngorms National Park, the air resonates with the sound of one of Scotland's rarest birds. Capercaillie are the world's biggest grouse. Just like his smaller moorland cousins, this male comes here every morning to strut his stuff. But today is special. The hens are here to spectate. They only visit this site for a few days a year. And they'll only mate with the most dominant male. It's his last chance to impress them. He just has one more rival to deal with.
challenger beats a retreat. Victory is his. And as king of the Capercailles, he gains the attention of all the hens. He soon builds up quite an entourage. And when he's done showing off, he'll mate with all of them. The spring in Scotland rapidly becoming one of the sunniest on record. Prospects are improving for another rare inhabitant of this forest. The older pine cones are drying out and opening up, making the seeds inside accessible to a hungry, rare red squirrel. In his rush to reach them, some of the cones get dislodged and fall to the forest floor. It'll be just as easy to eat them down there. But he needs to be quick. A younger male has just spotted them. And to him, the fallen cones are like manna from heaven. Stealing one will be much easier than collecting his own. He must make a fast getaway. Now the hard-working squirrel will catch him. The small seeds between the scales are high in fat and protein. The energy they provide will help the young thief compete with the older males once the breeding season ramps up. What makes these ancient Caledonian forests so special is the irregular spacing of the trees. Gaps allow the spring sunshine in so that it can warm the forest floor. A healthy forest has around 500 wood ants for every square meter. Most are female workers who devote their lives to serving their queen. She lives in a subterranean palace crowned by a dome of pine needles. The warmth of the spring sun draws worker ants up onto the roof where they can sunbathe. They then take their body heat back into the nest to share with the queen and her eggs. Up to 100,000 ants might live here. So good hygiene is crucial. Worker ants carry pine resin back to the nest 
which they'll use to make their own disinfectant. When supplies of resin are getting low, they follow the ant superhighway to the source of their supply. Dry resin is often found at the base of trees, but they can't resist a trip up for a drop of the fresh stuff. It's not just a source of energy. Resin contains antibiotics, which may help ants live longer. But drinking it comes with risks. Once stuck, there's no escape. And some ants end up entombed for eternity. By the end of April, the sap is also beginning to rise in the ancient oak forests of Scotland's west coast. Buds are beginning to open and the wildflowers won't have long before the oak leaves shut out the light. On the edge of the forest, a rare female white-tailed eagle is facing challenges of her own. She's a relatively inexperienced mother and has two eager and hungry offspring to support. Eaglets grow rapidly, and she'll need to keep them both well fed. The battle is now on to keep both chicks alive. But she won't have to do it alone. Her mate heads out on patrol. With a wingspan close to two and a half meters, flying is almost effortless. but he's sending a clear message to other eagles. The stretch of coast is mine. And I'll fight to protect it. His partner is equally protective. But right now, she's on feeding duty. Between hatching and leaving the nest, her eaglets will require almost 100 kilograms of flesh between them. This is only the third time this male has raised a family with his mate. Raising two chicks to adulthood is something neither he nor his partner have managed before. He'll do most of the hunting in these early days, but the chicks will need feeding for three months. Catching enough food for themselves and a growing family will get harder and harder. 
Starvation is a very real threat that the two Czechs already seem aware of. The female Czech hatched before her younger brother. And already dominates him at mealtimes. If he can't get his fair share of food, his days may already be numbered. More than 150 kilometers due east of the Eagles, temperatures continue to rise in Cairngorms National Park. A young red squirrel makes an early start so that he can ease an itch or two. He doesn't need his thick winter fur anymore. If anything, it's a hindrance to the task in hand. He's looking for a mate. A female squirrel has left a scent trail which he follows. Until he spots her. Her beauty is enough to get any young male's tail wagging. He makes his approach. But as he closes in, she vanishes. She likes a chase. And he must keep up to prove he's a worthy mate. But she's quick. All it takes is a hop and a jump to put herself out of reach. All the young male can do is watch as she melts back into the forest. There will be other female squirrels out there. If he can summon up the energy to find them. Cairngorms National Park has over 60 deep, dark lochs, which gradually grow warmer in spring, causing fish to rise. Perfect timing for this male osprey, who has just flown almost 5,000 kilometers from his overwintering grounds in West Africa. He's hungry. But this catch isn't for him. It's for his lifelong mate to prove he's still got what it takes. Food accepted. Now it's time to start the renovation work. Their nest was badly damaged in winter storms, and she won't lay eggs here until he fixes the place up. Mm. 
He works as architect, builder, and laborer, sourcing the material, transporting it, and fixing it to just the right place. To survive strong winds, the nest should be at least one and a half meters wide and half a meter deep. While he collects more material, his mate surveys the building work. The male takes a break from errands to watch his partner settle in. She'll be the judge of his work. But only time will tell if he's done enough to father this year's chicks. By May in Shetland, long spring days are fueling a period of rapid change in the sea. Plankton blooms have drawn in ocean giants. Humpback whales gorge in the shallow coastal waters. Having spent winter off the coast of Norway, they're headed south. To breeding grounds in the warm seas of the Caribbean. The plankton-rich waters around the Shetland Isles are an important refueling stop. With every enormous gulp, they filter out tons of tiny animals. Vital energy for the long journey ahead. It's not just deep ocean behemoths that find refuge among the Shetland Isles. Steep, rocky cliffs and pinnacles give the impression of a fortress hewn by wind and waves. with the sole purpose of keeping visitors out. But there's no stopping some. Every year, gannets fly all the way here from Africa to breed. Up to 30,000 pairs nest on this headland alone. A blizzard of birds searches for a sight. The demand for cliff space is so high that massive gannet cities form. Cliffs that have stood empty all winter are now home to over a million seabirds. All here to raise a family. Among them are over 20,000 puffins. These 25-centimetre seafarers 
only make landfall when they need a nest site. Puffins mate for life. And after reuniting with their partners, they look for a nest burrow and quickly move in. Safety is paramount. This is no island paradise. Skewers are closing in. They're formidable predators. And they've got their eyes on the puffins. Puffin breeding season is well underway. Skewers are spoilt for choice. To stay safe, they must stay out of sight. Most birds have already moved into their burrows. and are putting the finishing touches to their nests. But an inexperienced male is lagging behind. He's only just found a mate. And now he needs to find somewhere for her to lay their egg. All the best burrows are already taken. And the one he's left with has partially caved in. Now begins the hard work of digging it out. And he'd better be quick. Skewers are near. They're big, powerful birds with a hooked bill for tearing flesh and a reputation for violence, even amongst their own kind. For maximum safety, the puffin needs his burrow to be almost a meter deep. But rocks are slowing the excavation down. The closer skewers get, the more nervous the female puffin becomes. But finally, the burrow is ready. Now at least, they have somewhere safe to lay their egg. While spring in Shetland is only just reaching its peak, it already feels like summer in Moffat. 500 kilometers to the south. A rise in water temperature has triggered the emergence of adult mayfly. Perfect timing for a wagtail and her hungry fledgling.
in an old oak grove nearby. A female goosander has hatched 12 chicks of her own. The scent of the nest will soon attract predators, like weasels. Her babies will be safer on the river. But first they'll need to pluck up the courage to get there. One small step for an adult duck. But one giant leap for a day-old duckling. They've all made a leap of faith. Now they must follow Mum to the river before they're spotted. Their turbulent new world is a ten-minute hike away. But once they are, they take to it like ducks to water. Their mum knows this river well. She'll act as their guide and protect her for the next month or so. While the ducklings acclimatize to their new, watery world. But Mum can only do so much. The little goosenders must largely find their own food and fend for themselves until 65 days later when their wings can finally launch them to the skies of their wild Scottish home. <laughs>